Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Paradox, the game launcher for the internet, is now available in Linux with full support for, well, one game and Survive the Distance, our favorite arcade racer, was going to get a 1.0 release after six years in development. Do you hate running in directions? Well, we may have a game for you. And flip it, curses mono. See the sharp tongue on that boy. Oof. Valve's war on skin trading continues. <laughs> no bot is safe. And uh, NVIDIA wants to curb the real reason the GPP failed. Journalists <laughs> doing their journalistic things. Oh, hey, beautiful people. I'm Vince Stone. <laughs> Here at LGC <laughs> Actual piloting the... Uh, Starship SS, oh my god, it's on fire here in Athens. Uh, joined every week by the uh, flaming hot Canadian himself up in Toronto. Oh, I'm, I'm very spicy. Canadians very are weird, man. It gets hot, they turn blue. It's um, true. It is true. And it's, it's, it's the opposite of those Budweiser cans. <laughs> <laughs> and all the way from Britannia, the man on the island, one Pedro. Yes, you know him, you love him together with Shadrell. The most special bit. The ones we love the most. Helping us form. Music. Dun, 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 dun. Before we get started, we like to see what's going on in each other's life. Organs. Um, I'll start off. I don't do that a lot. Giggity. So uh, Linux Neuro picked us up a uh, some extra USB holes, which we needed <laughs> from our wish zone. And I was like, okay, we were talking about this in the pre-pre super shows. And so I slapped it in the box. It worked. And I was like, all right, that's cool. Immediately filled it up. Terrifying thing. 14 USB devices plugged in to make all this run. 12 of them have to be running or everything catches on fire, so stay tuned. Um, but I was thinking Maybe. about this. This is what I was thinking about. Is I, have, I have a gang of like random, bizarre stuff that you may or may not know works with Linux. Because th there were definitely a couple of like solo plugs. And like, eh, click, is, is that going to work? Turns out it did. So I'm thinking about creating a page, you know, with my stuff, Jordan's stuff, and Pedro's stuff. It's just going to be shit we know works with Linux. Yeah. Uh, like all the stuff, you know, accounting. So that's an mm. idea. What I'll about show you? Up on, I'll show up on my Google search. It'll, it'll be brilliant. What do you got going on, Pedro? Well, uh, over here, not much has been going on. I know I'll be going to London in a couple of weeks uh, to get a... Uh, security plus certification mm -hmm. so work is paying for that so i'm good <laughs> up next if we were going in order uh, <laughs> uh, my brain is cooking it's 30 <laughs> degrees here I, I as a canadian this this temperature confuses us and infuriates me yeah. as, I, as i'm literally squeegeeing the sweat off my thighs <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully, just hopefully, it, it hasn't completely uh, t turned our steamy horse into a blob of nope. No, we're, we're still we're still squeegeeing our way through that. It's the steam. Hang on, no, uh, too soon, no. too soon, too, too spoon. Time out, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, gotta get on this, man. What kind of fucking shitty dog and pony show is this? <laughs> well. It's a uh, do it really bad. Bots, man. Okay, yes, bots. So, Valve, in their quest to automate everything, they don't really like it when someone else automates something. And, uh, well, we've known this for a long time, and I'm guessing Valve did too, but there were a lot of accounts on Steam that were just basically hordes. They were hordes for those skin trading websites uh, to give people their winnings. And there was one particular website that still allowed people to cash out. Say you wanted to sell all your skins and you wanted to get some actual money, not just Steam store credit. Well, you could do that with OP skins. But Valve have gone in and they brought down the hammer on the... Um, on the whole shebang uh at last count the the amount of skins uh that got nuked from those accounts being banned was around two million us dollars well i mean it, <laughs> it's fiat currency baby now what they really did here is it's one particular site because op skins yeah that, that was the thing man they, they abused uh they, they found a way around using public api and 
to re-enable gambling because Valve doesn't care if you trade skins. They're cool for mm-hmm. that. You know, have your bots. You know, other places have showed up. It's just as soon as you go back into the gambling business, you know, putting some money down, like, ooh, for a chance to win, whatever, guns or something. Uh, yeah, they put the nope hammer on that shit. Well, it, it boils down to if if you're going to make money on Valve, Valve wants that cut. Mm. Yeah. And it's, I, uh, Valve doesn't really like people, you know, taking money away from them because third party sites that allow you to cash out means Valve do- doesn't get a cut out of it. And, 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 and I mean, yeah, give, given all the given all the uh, legal shenanigans happening in the past year and a bit because of uh, the skin gambling and whatnot, yeah. Valve is a little <laughs> paranoid that they're going to be put under closer scrutiny from the courts. So it makes mm-hmm. sense that they're going to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I. Who, who, who cares? It's, protocols. Uh, <laughs> protocols. Yeah. So um, this is this is uh, someone posted this on the Steam client beta group, and they're asking uh, if they could base Steam chat on an open protocol such as XMPP, IRC, or Matrix. Um, and here, here, here's the thing about that: most, most, uh, most places that run chat infrastructure want you to use their client. Valve mm-hmm. has a very vested interest in keeping you in the Steam client as long as possible, because then they can subject you to their ads, they can do analytics on you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They, they do not want you to connect to their chat service, uh, even now, especially now that they have group chats a la Discord with mm-hmm. some other clients. Uh, hell, Google, shining bastion herald of open source, you guys. Uh, they're, they're, they're championing XMPP for uh, uh, for their chat for the longest time, and then they cut it over to Hangouts once they started to try and monetize uh, monetize that. And now they're very slowly killing it. So, how do you, how do you exactly do you spell monetize? Carefully, motherfucker. You do it carefully. <laughs> I want to suggest that. <laughs> hey man, I, I mean, if they did that, well, first of all, it's fucking Google. Yeah, what if, did you hear that Google's like, oh, there, there were some rumors. Google's going to release its own hardware game system, which I just laughed. It's like, no mm-hmm. one's buying shit from Google. They kill products for sport. Um, they, 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 they make them it. just to it's watch them die. die. Come on. Right. But if they open this up, I, yeah, no, 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 this has never happened. Because, Pedro, uh, am I crazy? Uh, I think bots, you think they're bad now? <laughs> Have you seen Discord? Then that's not even particularly open. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. no, it's it would be far more feasible slash likely that Valve would open the chat via API if they wanted to allow that particular bit of functionality. But as Jordan already mentioned, that's just not going to happen. Mm. No, <laughs> indeed, we do have some new stats that we have access to. <laughs> oh yes, like um, where, where you been, man? You know, mm. Steam wants some digits, man. We want to keep track to you. You know, that's why I gave you that free mobile. Uh, it's really just a couple of things. The uh, big one here, you can keep track of your recent login history, which I guess is of questionable use, maybe. I don't know. Uh, the best I can make out, 192 is your operating system. Uh, one Android device, 400 web question mark. I, I'm just, ho- ho- hello, Buffer Underrun, or Buffer <laughs> Overflow. How are, you, how are you doing? It reminds me of when, like, uh, Gangnam Style, like, broke YouTube's counting algorithm just because it got too many views. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, um, I think 192 is Linux because every single one of my logins is 192 and I haven't logged in through the browser or the Steam app at any time recently. Mm. Yeah, yeah li- li- liter- literally the last login I did via the browser was to check this page. Is showing us negative one, so I'm assuming that that is that okay. Yeah, I guess we should clarify it's not just Android, it's the Steam client, yeah, yes. yeah, well, the app. Which, mm-hmm. and one other thing, which apparently, uh, I'm forever alone on this one recent third party uh, site logins, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have I have nothing in there too, so yeah, me neither, which I'm calling <laughs> bullshit on that because I connected my uh story that's coming up, uh, the Paradox client, link that mm-hmm. to the account. It's still not showing up. I'm not. I'm not sure if that's OAuth links or like actual like. Da, 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 da. Oh well, what about like uh, Humble? Because my Humble account's linked to redeem. Yeah, yeah, that is an OAuth uh, thing. Humble, Humble, Humble doesn't your... do. Th- doesn't Humble not use OAuth anymore? They just give you keys these days. They were they were, they were, uh, they were doing OAuth. Be. Okay, they were take, doing OAuth okay, check this out. Uh, Gog, mm. Gog Connect. Yes. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used that recently. That didn't show up there. Right. Well, I that Valve rele- using or releasing broken software. <laughs> my, my, no, it's, it's entirely unheard of. I mean, I guess I guess the first page is useful. Like, if you suspect someone is like logging into your account without your permission or your consent, mm-hmm. this yeah. would tell you like, hey, the freaking mm-hmm. someone from Tanzania is logging into your Steam account. Because it was the one IP address in Tanzania. Well, this is true. Pedro, you've also logged in with wine, though, right? Yeah. Yes, I did. And that shows up as minus 192 as well. So, yeah, I think that's Linux. Hmm. Mm. That's the thing. Interesting. Uh, what do we have up next? Valve Spy. Oh, yes. So, speaking of Valve breaking things, uh, while well, back they broke Steam Spy because they set everyone's game's uh, library on their public uh, Steam profile to not public. Uh, and Steam Spy kind of relied on that to give a completely crap count of how many people had a certain game in their library. But a lot of people like that, especially developers for some reason. And, well, now, uh, according to uh, some slides from Valve's presentation at White Knights, uh, there is a little bit of something coming for the developers in the um, in the coming days weeks well it's valve time years <laughs> is probably death the most of the universe <laughs> reasonable uh no I, 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 i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty sure when the sun starts running out of uh, hydrogen and starts consuming the heavier elements we'll get uh yeah we'll get something yeah. on that front uh, uh, one, uh, one of the things about this though man i mean it looks like they're working on their version of steam spy yes mm-hmm. but yeah. it looks like it's going to be inward facing it's only going to be for developers yeah, and and I, the, the th- first th- question th- that, that was... popped into my head was, why wasn't this already a thing for developers? Why well, they, they were have developers metrics. given all They're of this information? Kind of crap. Yeah, and 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 I, I definitely I definitely think uh, having like a nicer sort of presentation layer to make that information actually useful mm. is probably yeah. is, is something that uh, <laughs> Valve is aiming to do. Yeah, but it, it it it's it's I think it's better that Valve is doing this internally as well because. You know, they have the actual data. Mm-hmm. We, we've, we've, we've talked about this a while with like the Steam hardware survey where it's like, oh, yeah, 1% are using Linux. 1% are getting that hardware survey when it pops up every so often. Valve mm-hmm. has actual numbers and they have confirmed that the hardware survey does not reflect those. This is so, true. And we've talked to developers directly, even on uh, like Wednesday's show. And on top of that, I'm just saying this when you can go back and look up, they're like, man, uh, Steam Spy numbers, that's not accurate at all. Yeah, so so, uh, so getting getting it straight from the horse, man, the nipply horses, well, this straight from the horses. Hundred percent true, but I do want to say yeah. this, man. I mean, Valve, Valve. I mean, seriously, I think like we all we all should definitely see a tweet from the Steam Spy guy about his upcoming <laughs> move to fucking Washington to work for you because don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Well, because if people well, were using Steam Spy, even though it was wildly inaccurate. Yeah, he kind of knows how to present stuff. Just do it. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Or, or or just steal his UI code. Because he, op- he open sourced that mess yeah, too. Yeah, just so. strider the UI code from him. It's better than his current solution, which is like, eh, it's got a kind of guest with some AI stuff. And it's like, no, don't do that. No. no so, so we're going from slight bullshit to total bullshit. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> performance enhancing gerbils. Hardware, yeah. So, uh... What's his name? Atun from Thunder Octone? Predator. I'm just going to keep dropping names. Uh, was banned from the International Dota 2 um, tournament, which is a tournament that scores a total of 15 million US dollars in prizes. Uh, and he was banned along with the rest of his team because he was using macros on his mouse. And, well, people have rightly, in my opinion, sort of started asking, okay, so when exactly does a bit of hardware that lets you do that out of the box, like the Razer mouse that he was using, uh, does? At what point does that become uh, cheating? And, well, according to the panel of judges, that is very much cheating. Well, Mm -hmm. here's the thing, is that it's not hardware. We're not talking about mechanically switched configurable mice. (laughs) This is all done in software, right? And I don't know. To me, it makes sense that, um, especially for like a skill and timing based game like Dota, um, use, using using a macro to input a complex series of key combinations 
is actually cheating. It, or it's at least outside the scope of what the tournament is supposed to be about. Now, I'm I'm one of these people who are like, yeah, we should ban steroids from sports, but we should also have the separate steroid league. See, just how <laughs> I, I, yeah, we could have the superhuman social. league. Well, yeah. listen, yeah. listen, you call it unlimited. I mean, I feel the same yeah. way about motorsports racing. I was like, bring back the unlimited class. Uh, but also, when you, if it's mechanically, man, don't don't say shit like that because then these motherfuckers are going to show up with like steampunk mouse and shit. Mm-hmm. And, well, listen, we I already do. Let's a, face it. Even we, 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 we got to save do coal any, uh, Competitive Steam gaming. Power. I have this 12 button mouse that just, you know, it can actually do macros and it can do individual uh, keyboard strokes and it can right, do right. DPI right, switching on the fly. But, Is that but here, 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 here's the thing though. If you're, if you're moving buttons around, like I, I, uh, man, I'm going to freaking detangle this mess of thing. I like, I like using, I like using the side button on my mouse. I like, I like binding that to reload. I think that that is more useful to me yeah. than hitting R, right. That's, <laughs> To me, that's not cheating. If um, if this is re if it's reload, switch to my pistol, fire two shots, and then switch back, then mm, well, then I understand that, that, why they have the rule because they don't yeah. need that uh, wiggly squishy room. But yeah. you know, I honestly I don't keep track of Dota. I launched it and I was like, does Vulcan work? Oh, that's neat. Does that benchmark? Uh, don't the useless. So I kind of assume programmable gerbils were allowed, but you know. Here. And they uh, they were up to this point because if you look at pictures of professional gaming teams, they all have those stupid uh, ma- mice with even more buttons than mine. I say, and, listen, we, we need to ban the real performance enhancing drug. <laughs> uh, I, I think we need to start a movement know. to ban RGB. No, oh, man. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you also raised a good point in the show notes about testing for Adderall. I think, yeah, I think lately they're actually starting to like test for shit like amphetamines and whatnot. Well, that's what I'm saying, man. I mean, test them for Adderall, Ritalin, anything like that. Because if you're going to tell me that shit doesn't affect your performance. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, absolutely, absolutely <laughs> Those does. were what drugs designed specifically for that. Mm. Now, 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 here, now then, then that raises the interesting question. What if like you have, you have severe ADHD and you actually need that to function? Well, this then is, you don't it, get to fucking play. The, yeah, this is this is this is a broader. I mean, broader listen, topic. I I understand if you're using something all natural like cocaine, but <laughs> this pharmaceutical bullshit. No, 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 no. Yeah, suck on yeah. some coca leaves, <laughs> Rob. Indeed. All right, so Rob, yeah, Rob, yes, combi, yes, combo, whoever, yes, Rob, yes, combo number five. I want that. On, yeah. Um. Yeah, so he is moving to Valve. Uh, he worked on a game sin- uh, called The Invisible Hours, which I looked up and is not available on Linux. It was a VR experience. Uh, it was like a sort of murder mystery type thing. Uh, and now he's getting hired by Valve. Uh, rather, he got hired fer- uh, very soon after he finished that project. Uh, and now the move is official. He's actually going there to the office. There it is. Yep. 14 okay. post. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually a little sad you had to scroll that far. Yeah. But based on based on like their acquisition of the Firewatch team um, for Valley of the Gods and now this, it seems clear that Valve is developing some sort of like narrative VR thing. What it, what that is, we don't know. Will it ever see the light of day? Mm-hmm. You 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 gotta imagine that Valve, given given the type of company that Valve is, they probably start up a ton of projects and then they lose a ton of steam and then they just get shelved. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's there. like eight iterations of Half-Life 3 that have just hey, like... I'm sure there's tons of fuck around projects, but with like their very flat structure, you just kind of work on whatever. And that that makes yeah. for a good work environment. It's really bad for getting shit done, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, but I, mean, I mean, when you get the cash cow like Steam, then... Uh, then that makes it even worse because yeah, yeah. there's no incentive <laughs> to get to shit anything. done. Right, you're like, oh, it's, right, well, we run a store money. The money fountain's like on. We, mm. Yeah. So yeah. then you no longer you're no longer a game development company as a like a fuck around incubator like eh. mm-hmm. then their talents like all right I'm tired of fucking around I want to go work on something they go somewhere else yeah and, I mean, uh, I mean for, as for Rob specifically I uh, yeah none of his games are available on Linux the games at least that on Twitter he says he worked on the Invisible Hour as Farpoint Rhyme I'd heard about Rhyme but that's not available on Linux either so yeah there's no reason uh, for that. 
Yeah, no rhyme or Hey, man, reason. let's talk about running backwards again. Yeah, uh, we, we so we, t- we talked about this a while ago, and we were talking about um, Crow Team's uh, talent incubator that uh, they that they've set up to give uh, uh, developers uh, like a space to go work, support resources, tools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, one of one of the games that they uh, announced when we were covering that article was I Hate Running Backwards. Uh, and now it is available on the Linuxes, which is good because it seems that um, it seems that if you're going to be a part of the Crow Team Incubator, you're gonna you're gonna get some uh, Linux love out of the deal as well. It's it's, it's basically like um, I want to call it like Reverse Crash Bandicoot, where you're just shooting stuff. And you are in uh, fact running backwards. You yes. are you are running backwards. So if you hate running backwards, this game may not be for you. Also, Crow Team. Gave them a lot of IP to work with because this thing basically starts off as running backwards serious Sam. It even yes. has a giant red scorpion. <laughs> it's like it's yeah. uh, you get the Sam skin for your player character, you get the Sam enemies, you get the Sam general looking backgrounds. Yeah. <laughs> it's currently I mean, 35% off and look, my, well, only local multiplayer. Oh, big kudos to uh, Binks Interactive for uh, sending us some keys. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. <laughs> and it doesn't yeah. say yet that it works on the Linux, but we can confirm it in fact yes, yeah. does. Um, Trust us and only us. Coming fall 2027, or hopefully before the eventual heat death of the universe, your first look at distance 1.0. Hey, everyone. It's been said many times over the years. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, I've been waiting this <laughs> fucking game longer Thousands than Thousands of years right. ago in the future. They're working about it. It's parkour racing for cars maybe you've never heard about it somehow and they are talking about actually getting the point release out getting it out for playstation 4 which i went back and checked the kickstarter and that was part of the original kickstarter plan too now i know pedro uses oh well, we can't pick on them like carmageddon that was like unlike carmageddon they actually released a linux product uh very yes very. but uh, what i'm saying is it's like the carmageddon linux port or distance coming out of early access but it's it looks like they're actually wanting to release it properly and not just have it in permanent early access like it well, has not. been at I this mean, point. They said 100% of the latest holdups have been due to the completion of the story mode, which I cannot give a singular fuck about. Now, I know uh, the main guy working on this. Like, I'm really trying to invoke a most... <clears throat> it's like, listen, <laughs> I understand that's your thing. I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying that's not the reason I will be playing this game. Uh, They are reworking the menus, but there's a classic mode. You can go back and do that. And uh, a couple of the community maps that have been made over the past six years are making its way into the game proper, along with something I'm sure Pedro will love. More ways to cheat. Oh, (laughs) and there's... Well, uh, unlockable cars is nice. I like that. For, I like um, just changing the car colors. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, pay to win! <laughs> they say the level editor, it's not going to be the hot shit out of the box, uh, but it's going to work nonetheless. I mean, it currently does. You can get this in early access right now on Steam. It's a good game. I think one of the biggest things is after six years, a lot of uh, the it never really hit like critical mass. Mm-hmm. And after six years, it's kind of a ghost town with multiplayer. And you can tell because if you go and do the tracks, because after whenever there's an update to the tracks, they reset the global leaderboards. Mm. So if you go in and you set your new time, chances are you're going to be pretty high up. I am consistently in the top 10 of the global leaderboards right now because there's no one playing it. Mm. And um, he, he will remind you of that day in and day out without prompting. Well, he should because... Those two, our, my copy and Pedro's copy, cost a hundred and forty fucking dollars. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that, that's the thing. I mean, yeah, Pathfinder Kingmaker <laughs> coming August twenty eighteen. What is it? Well, Pathfinder is basically three point five edition Dungeons and Dragons with the serial numbers pulled off. So, uh, you might remember that from such game that rule those rules from such games as Neverwinter Nights. So this is basically a multiplayer-less Neverwinter Nights, and since it's Unity-based, it probably work will work a little better than the Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's another isometric turn-based uh, Pillars of Eternity, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Th- those sorts of games. So if you're uh, if you're into that, um, well, it's it's coming it's coming soon. That's I remember seeing some ugly baby. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I remember seeing some email updates about this a while ago. They had a Kickstarter. Um, mm-hmm. 
they um linux has confirmed they don't have the linux beta out just yet uh they have a mac beta though because you know all those mac gamers they uh they really like spending money on video games hey man listen it looks like it's old enough to really run on a mac yeah it, uh, yeah, and uh, looking at the other specifications for the game itself, it's single player only. It doesn't look particularly inviting, and it's party based, like every other one that we've had thus far. Okay, they mentioned that uh, you know it's inspired by Fallout One and Fallout Two and Arcanum and uh, Baldur's Gate. It's like okay, because right. it uses the same fucking rules from those games. Yeah, and Fallout 1 and Fallout 2, Arcanum 2, but I'm not sure about that one. Uh, it was mostly single character based. It's the party thing, I enjoyed the party thing in certain specific games. I played a lot of Baldur's Gate back in the day. I still have to finish Wasteland 2. I enjoyed it there too. But can we please have something that's like focused on a single character? Uh, well, no, old, it's, how about it's, this? It's, it's, uh, it's, how about we work out uh, if you got like a paragraph to say, put something in the show notes, Pedro. Yeah, it's kind of hard to time. <laughs> Up next. Up next, physiology and anatomy: the king's request. Uh, this is a free-to-play educational game that teaches you a little bit about. Wait, uh, you mean like educational? Educational. Educational. You know, well, hey man, I'm just saying, Steam's like anything fucking goes, baby. L- l- listen, even even you, you can you can learn stuff from educational games. Just don't take it take it with a bit of a grain of salt and actually, you know. Um, don't, educate. Um, do, 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 do some research. Educate yourself. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like yeah, so, uh, yeah. learning physiology or anatomy from a RPG maker game. Yeah. I mean, it's a thing. You can. You, uh, when I was working at C dot, uh, when mm-hmm. when I was doing uh, work for Fedora and Raspberry Pi, they were doing a game based on Mendelian genetics, just to like teach people how to inbreed. And you too can use the power of eugenics to take over a fantasy world. Um, it's free. It's free to play. So if you want to check it out, you absolutely can. There are dragons. If that's your jam, it looks like a. It looks like a um, SNES era JRPG because you know it's you know, RPG maker, like Pedro said. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. Free to play. Keep, Nothing to worry about. Free. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, no. It is free. <laughs> Okay, uh, last and least in our new games for we bounce out of here, Taco Bells, as far as the yeah. eye can see. Oh, yes. Lo- welcome back to 1995 with Judge Dread 95. And it's now available on Linux. A very short um, announcement that they made. It's like, oh, thanks for your patience. We got uh, Judge Dread 95 launched for Linux. The game is now available for download. Enjoy. And, well... I, it, it, it looks very 1995. It's a Genesis sure. game. I I just want to know why why come Genesis game needs one gigabyte of storage. <laughs> I, I I'm more surprised that it's only got two fucking reviews, man. Um, this is from Throwback Entertainment. No respect the badge. Hey, man, Wesley Snipes needs some money, and mm-hmm. maybe that's the thing. What is this going to clock? Oh fuck that. Seven ninety nine. Yeah, that it's ain't a bit happening. much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, considering you can get it for free with an emulator. Well, no, I, I, ooh, okay, let's see. Uh, what, <laughs> yeah. what, what does the infamous Drukhan have to... Jo- Jordan Freeman? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yep. my, my cousin, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, apparently, that's the thing that you can safely avoid. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you, yeah. You, you, do need, you do need that 100% OpenGL, organic, grain-fed, non-GMO <laughs> OpenGL. I don't know, is the 100% OpenGL thing like, oh, you need all of the OpenGL 4.6 Listen, listen, it's just trying to say don't try to walk up in that house with any of that 97% OpenGL compatible (laughs) bullshit, all right? (laughs) Welcome back to Cyrix OpenGL. (laughs) Right? It's like OpenEL. You're like, what? No, get out of here. Open Schmiel. Right. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, oh, open, open me up. I think we're done. Coming up next... We'd like to tell you something about NVIDIA, but they've gagged us, like with actual gags. It's really hot. Here at Linux Gamecast Weekly, we have uh, a bit of uh, a Rolodex. I'm totally not plagiarizing that from uh, the uh, break, what we just had. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we do have a Rolodex of people who are all manner of awesome uh who not only help us bring us uh bring you this show uh but 
the Wednesday show. That was a Patreon goal. You guys and gals helped us get to it. Uh, those streams that oh, we do geez, during the Pedro, week. Are you, you still going to talk about the beautiful people who make this show possible again? Yes, we Listen, they are a very small percentage of the people who fund us. We got to talk about the Uggos, too. They need love, too. Uh, and but you know you're you're all beautiful in my eyes because I've stared at the sun for too long and I can't tell the difference. Hey man, don't you're but, right. Listen, man, if you got blue eyes, eyes are just like skin. Stare at the sun for like an hour or two, they'll turn brown. You might also. <laughs> LGC cares. You can su- you can support this and other crucial medical advice being distributed via this nonsense by heading on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Click in the support button or Amazon affiliate links, New Egg affiliate links, all sorts of stuff where you can click on them, enter your credit card number after a couple additional clicks, and then we can get some money. Unless you're giving us Bitcoin, in which case, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I thought I'd have a Bitcoin joke by now, but I have, I have no. It, you, you can you can insert your own. It's, it'll be funnier, trust me. Um, you can you can also head on over to Patreon.com/slash/Linux Gamecast, where we have lots and lots of goodies. Oh man, they they have a little sidebar now. We we've we made it, you guys! Oh my God, 118 oh. of you are giving us 260 bucks a week, which means we Damn hit that it. goal. Boo! Linux game cast the flamethrower is a reality. It's happening. Merchandising. Ron oh man! Merchandising. The where the real money from the movie is made. Uh, we got <laughs> we got we got uh, tipping us over the edge. We gotta give a big old thanks to Mr. David S. who had increased his pledge to tip us over there. So now uh, we're, 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 we if you if you check the pre pre super shows and also available exclusively to Patreon and there's a video uh, version now there, 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 there's a video out, yeah um, you can you can see us brainstorming about what exactly we're gonna we're gonna sell you people uh, uh, so hey man we do want to talk about that I basically thrown together what we were calling the Model T or the Model V of our first shirt I think we're gonna do a small limited run I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this I gotta wait for it to show up. Because we're not going to put up just like, let's throw some images online and see what it looks. Damn it. I didn't set up yawn cam this week either. Fuck. (laughs) Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be a thing. Uh, I want to make sure the prints are good before we open it up for everyone. And that's going to be a thing. As patron, uh, thanks all of you who've made that possible. And oh man, I think Frank's hiding this week. Yeah, can't even see him. Yeah. He's chilling out, man, motherfucker. He's he's being all emo. He's brooding in the dark. But Frank is the new Batman, by the way. Ben Affleck quit. (laughs) Thank you, everyone, for making this business possible, because we're going to close out on the end of the month doing that. I think up next is the uh, Alpha site. It's kind of cool. We were talking about that again in the pre pre super shows. Go back. You could have custom RSS feed. Plug that in if you listen to this, because most of you do. It's kind of sexy. Um some things that are coming up that's going to be fun that's going to be awesome and thanks everyone for making this possible because it's like what the hell did our bullshit little podcast turn into we shouldn't be doing we should not have this much much technology and we just want to do more it's terrifying i i had a fantastic idea for a bit of merchandise oh hell toilet paper with strider's face on it a what toilet paper to- toilet paper. Mm-hmm. you don't already have that <laughs> well i mean i i get it custom printed but not everyone wants to go out of their way to do that <sighs> Okay. There, 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 there is a demand. Anyways, we got, we got uh, Nvidia news, but not the ones you might be expecting. Given no, this no, no, everyone's looking forward to that new driver version that doesn't suck. But this isn't it. In fact, this is more. Uh, well, it is more Nvidia being on top and just saying, "Yo, we're going to change our NDA." And well, the internet sort of kicked up a stink because the NDA is. Sort of like a blanket uh, gag order, according to some websites. Uh, and um, video cards here says uh, NVIDIA's new NDA attacks journalistic work. That's that's a bit much. Uh, the fact is, uh, the NDA all this is in our imposes notes, a five-year expiration date on confidential information. It's uh, event gonna, is going to go into the um, the bullshit uh, lawyer speak. Uh, and decode it for you in a bit, but yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of legalese in the uh, NDA. That <laughs> that, was that's leaked. code for Pedro's going to write one little line, but he's got like another three minutes in him. Yeah, we established them. There, if 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 there if there is a little bit of Pedro text, mm-hmm. there is a lot of Pedro talk, and if there is a lot of Pedro text, 
There's even more okay. Pitch we're talking. I will I will uh, condense it into the line that I wrote in the show notes, which is it must be great to be so high up that you can write a an NDA that pisses off so many people and you just don't care. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say I've probably signed more NDAs than the two of you combined with multiple numbers behind it. Um, Possibly. Over the years with the people I'm going to I mean, be. you live in the U.S. Yeah, you probably did. <laughs> You've also been in the industry with, you have a decade on me, so yeah. I'll, I'll catch up eventually. Yeah, you'll catch up. I, I'm going to have to sign another big honking one at the end of the July when I'm going to go to do some contract work. Uh, but. Anyway, with this, first off, it's a fucking two-page NDA. That's nothing. I've signed books. I've signed small novels that I'm pretty <laughs> sure they own Pedro. Um, I mean, sorry, that's that's going to be a conflict because I technically own Pedro. Yeah, I have listen, that. hey man, you, you you I'm not fighting with alphabet agencies. Everyone anyway, there's me. been a ton of re over this and just kind of misreporting. I think. <laughs> listen, I, I know someone right now is like, oh, it's because you're a shill for Nvidia. I mean, I, that shit does not apply to me. I use what works. Right now, what works is my fucking NVIDIA card, all right? Eat a bag of dicks. I don't love one corporation more than another. The lawyer speak in this fucking NDA, if you want to break it down, it says three things, three important things. One, don't post your review before the date, time, and in the right time zone. Then when we say you can publish it, it's like, all right. Two. Don't test our cards with some fucky-ass setup. Like, don't test it using Red Hat 5 and the Nouveau, Nouveau, whatever you want Nouveau? to call it. Nouveau? Nouveau. Nouveau. Yeah. I like words. Uh, don't use those drivers and use that for your fucking benchmark. Don't do that. And, you know, if you're good, sometimes, if you're, if you're doing stuff, you're working on something, you're like, I'm having an issue with this. What do you think might be causing this? Sometimes the tech people at AMD... NVIDIA, Matrox, I don't know if they're still around. I'm just throwing them there because I still love them. They yeah, might, Matrox is still around. Yeah, they might oh, tell yeah. you some trade secret shit and be like, yo, okay, this is the reason this is going to do this and you got to do this. Don't tell anyone for a period of five fucking years. Now, I, 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 I like, on, on, on paper, the, the legalese is, is designed to be reasonable, right? But they, they, they say confidential information shall mean any and all technical and non-technical information. So that's fairly broad. They can basically say they, they, they can define whatever they want as uh, confidential information, which may or may not gag journalists. And I think the concern is not that they is that they might go and try to abuse this because NVIDIA is not a good guy. Like. Ben, like you said, it's a soulless corporation. Mm -hmm. They're 100 percent interested in maintaining their profits, and that means controlling their image because we've seen that backlash here's the thing. does. Cost here's money. here's the thing, Mister. I didn't write anything on this topic. Um, <laughs> third about fair play. It's yeah. uh, 2018, Brad. Here's the thing: you try to bullet bullshit stuff like that, it's going to get leaked. So, yeah, it is. And the the wording is vague enough that people are genuinely concerned. And it's it's NVIDIA. They're already in kind of a bad place when it comes to They're press. Dicks. NVIDIA, send me some reviews on Apple. Seriously, call me girlfriend. Um, dicks. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, you, you want that new self-driving car? They're going to accidentally not turn on that overpass. <laughs> Drive right into me. Um. Yeah. yeah. They're the market leaders, but they're not uh, they're not handling it gracefully. <laughs> Listen, here, here's the thing. Um, everyone wants to get wound up like the Discrete grab, that's not where they make their fucking money, A, eh? You know, yeah, it, it would piss them off a little bit if they lost that entire division, but it wouldn't kill NVIDIA, man. No. no. So, yeah. keep that in mind. Okay, up Developers! Next. Developers, 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 cake. Damn it, that's another thing I should have had set up. Linux from the devs, back to gaming. They actually talked to a couple of developers um, from SES, you know, uh, off-road, not off-road, but American Truck Stimulator and all that fun stuff. Um, the co-founder of Witchbeam and who else? They also got the uh, lads from Frozen Bite. Uh, and uh, Milkstone. And Milkstone. Uh, Just kind of talking about, hey man, wh wh what do you think about, you know, doing your ports and stuff like that? They throw some numbers. Like, Linux sales 1.4% for Trine 2 and Milkstone about 1.75. Uh, Wooby Linux mm -hmm. users about not point not one percent of our player base. <laughs> And Aquarius uh, coming in first at 4%. And they talk about, hey, man, what, what are your plans in the future to support Linux? And they roll down the 
one thing I'm going to say about this is I like the Trine developers for Frozen Byte because they're just flat mm-hmm. out fucking honest. They're not dodgy about it. Like, listen, the two people at our company that knew how to Linux Pro done piece the hell out. Left. Right. <laughs> so that's that, that said, man, I, I think it's very important to it is just tell people don't don't bullshit people. We don't want to hear, well, maybe, because then you get motherfuckers on the internet that think that uh, they make these decisions with fee-fees. Like, well, if you're shocking off dick, we'll get that Linux City port. Project Red. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, hopefully that's been a lesson to some people. Because you got to remember, I mean, yeah, it can be expensive to get your stuff over to Linux, but you also need to be educated in some things. Hopefully somebody's playing this back. It, you know, you don't have to target all distributions. Target one. Maybe Ubuntu, maybe Steam OS, just one. Do that. It's going to cost some money, but Linux comes with something that Mac and Windows doesn't come. It comes with a free fucking marketing department. Oh yeah, free yeah, marketing it, it, department and free QA. It it, it, all, it also comes with a very very nice development environment. And the yeah. recurring theme is for the people for the the developers here who actually have uh, historically better Linux support or have, are more receptive and more positive messages for. Linux ports, their developers are doing work on Linux, which makes sense. Um, if you're going to be doing, uh, if you're going to be doing development on the operating system, then you're probably going to want to support it so that you don't have to switch to another computer if you want to test. Yeah. And this is something that I, I know I've been screaming about it for a while. We've been talking about it for a while. Is we need to capture the developers and make them use the cross-platform tools because developing in a Unix environment is way, way better. Than Windows, I have to develop in Windows after developing in Unix, and it's it's the worst. I hate it. It <laughs> makes me want to cut my balls off. Mm. Do you want to set a path backwards. in Windows? Welcome to hell. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so if you can get the developers to come over, you can get them to use the tools that allow them to uh, to essentially make their work apply to multiple multiple um, distributables, multiple end goals. Then yes, you will you will get that Linux support. Mm-hmm. Um, Godot, Godot has recognized this. Godot is doing a huge amount of outreach to smaller developers. Unreal has basically said, you know, we're just going to let the community do their thing. And Un- Unity mm-hmm. is at least trying to Linux. They so, do. I mean, the tools have to get there, too. You can't just say, go figure it out, uh, you know. I, I, absolutely. Yeah. And <laughs> progress has been made. And we do have a ton of people coming out. All they know is, you know, DX12, DX11. That's the, the environment the that studio. they know. Right. So... But I do say this as a word of caution to anybody out there considering putting your game on Linux. More importantly to what I was saying earlier is that free PR department will fucking turn on you. And it will turn on you hard if you pull out. If you say something like, hey man, we're doing Linux. That's great. And you keep that fucking lie up. You're like, I'm going to use this free marketing department. Guess what? The North remembers motherfucker. And they remember hard. Isn't that right, Stainless? You fuck mothering <laughs> clowns from Isn't Carmageddon. that right, City Project Red? Where the hell is Witcher 3? Uh, they're swimming in money, Pedro. They can't hear you. They'd have to come up for air for that. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd, I'd start screaming at Warner Brothers, but they can't hear us from the top of that Warner Brothers tower and the pool of money. And yeah. not the boondocks, but the paradox. They got a game client. That's the thing we found out about like maybe a week ago, two weeks ago. Turns out it's now on Linux. You can install it. And Pedro, you can play hundreds of games, right? Nope. Hundre- you could play games. Stellaris. Hmm. Literally. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Ethereum Dioxide writes, I'm very pleased to bring you the news that after much anticipation, the Linux version of PDX Launcher is now available for download. You can download it. The only thing you can play is Stellaris, which, all right, man, talk about happy and sad. I forgot. It's like Thursday, whenever this dropped, I was like, oh, that's neat. Installed it. Decent. No problems there. Everything mm-hmm. fired up. It worked. I was like, I own a gang of paradox games on steam and i was like Ooh, yeah let's link the accounts which was that's a whole other nightmare because apparently i already had a paradox account so we were <laughs> you know that game where you're like oh let's see what that's that's mm-hmm. i forgot my uh password let's punch in a bunch of emails and see who shows up with an answer um but then i got everything linked i opened up the client and i was like yay we're gonna play some no we're not nope mm-mm, not a single no. one of them and it's paradox. It's uh, as far as publishers go, they have one of the biggest Linux libraries currently available on Steam. 
Why is why are those games available on Linux through their own freaking client? Hey man, wh- why don't you Licensing. quit being such a jack? Well, it's not even. <laughs> maybe they're doing it right. They want to test shit. Also, could they, may, they might. Well, maybe they want you to buy their latest game. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm just saying. Uh, so, flippity ibbity dee dee Bo has some news for us. Yeah, uh, so apparently there was a bit of an update um, for games like Celeste, that really hard platformer that will literally make you cry out of just sheer frustration. Um, uh, apparently there is a uh, exception that occurs if you're using a newer Linux distribution. It says, system exception, magic number wrong, 542. Well, fortunately, um, our favorite Kabbal- Kabbalist, <laughs> Ethan uh, he, uh he came up with a solution. So... The current version of Mono depends on very specific behavior for N curses. N curses had an update that broke that behavior, um, but it is still preserved if you're using uh, X term as your terminal variable. So the workaround these days is to set to just in your bash RC or whatever. Next time you reboot your computer, set uh, export term equals X term. And that will be it. You will be off and ready to go. A fix is coming inbound from Mono because this is a Mono problem. So uh, now we're just waiting on it to get pushed out and ingested by the various distributions that have a stake in this. This, this, mm-hmm. this is just this is just the thing we uh, we, we like to, we like to highlight some of the work that Flibit's doing just because he always runs into really interesting issues, and we know a lot of developers. Um, yeah, watch the show. So. You know, there's a little problem that got solved. Maybe maybe you got hit by it if you're trying to develop a C-sharp app and deploy it under Linux. And one thing I like about Flibit is how uh, in-depth he tends to go with some specific things. And in this one, if you actually read the whole post, is like, yeah, I will have to go into the 40 games that I've ported over the years and update them to reflect this new uh, API change. And, you know, the, the thought of having those old ports actually have uh, a, a bit of an update and be compatible with uh, current uh, Linux distributions and uh, the current Linux uh, environment as it is, that makes me happy. No, man, uh, it, it's Ethan. So what he's going to do is try to write a script that can do all of those games all in 30 it seconds or less. will do it in like a minute. <laughs> right. So uh, something I've always liked to, speaking about game developers and people who port games is I, I like just listen I just like fucking with people when they're talking about the rendering I'm like oh it's a 2D game yeah well use Vulcan I'm like oh yeah shut up Dude. that's not funny then because <laughs> it's, like, it's such an asinine it's just a stupid idea it's like that it doesn't work like that until now oh <laughs> now it does so uh new rain new rain yeah, sure. Uh, he has, uh, he or she, they have put out RVG, which is um, high-level Vulcan 2D vector-like graphics in C++. And it is exactly what it says on the tin. You can use Vulcan to render uh, 2D vector graphics that you can use for whatever the hell you want. Uh, say you want to create a 2D hipster pixel game using Vulcan out of the box. You can now. It it's there. It's available. It's, yeah, and and that yeah. next thing, like you can you can you can make the joke. Oh, it's like, yeah, it's like using Vulcan for two D. Here's the thing: OpenGL is going the way of the dodo on several platforms. Good luck getting functional OpenGL drivers on Windows or Mac, uh, especially <laughs> now that uh, now that DirectX twelve is there. Microsoft's doing their thing with that, and Apple has gone full metal. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so now, now that you have things like uh, Molten VK and you have um, Vulcan's ability to ingest HLSL shaders, you can, um, yeah, there, there is a, t- for maximum platform support, you might as well do your 2D game in Vulcan with this at this it's, point. It's like, fuck it, YOLO. And I yeah. noticed it uses Ninja to build. And am I the only person that is like, every time I have to use Ninja in the back of my head, it's like, build Ninja, build Ninja, build. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you're not. <laughs> Well, from now on, I'm going to start doing that. Yes. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. We've accomplished it tonight. Uh, Bill, 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 Bill. All right. Um, Beam Dog. Uh, you might know them from that uh, one game we reviewed that kind of didn't work all that well. Well, we did um, throw chairs at Baldur's Gate, the Enhanced Edition. No, we didn't. Yeah, we Everyone did. Everyone or not. When? 
We did Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. Yeah, and Baldur's Gate. When did we do Baldur's Gate? Long ago. Let's talk about this at another <laughs> and, time. And, 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 and anyways, yeah. Jeez. So uh, up to up, uh, two point five update is available. There are a crap ton of bug fixes. Um, a lot, a lot of it involving spells like Tensor's floating disc, everyone's favorite floating <laughs> shape. Um, they're, they're, they also <laughs> fixed some issues with importing characters from Baldur's Gate. And what the edition. hell is an ox fix? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, this is basically it. There's like a there's a priest class in Baldur's Gate one. It's Clara class in Baldur's Gate 2. You can play the priest of tier kit in Baldur's Gate 1, transport it to 2. It there's some mismatch. They fixed it. It's not uh it's not a uh, 100% clean solution, but it will let you continue your character on. Good lord, the priest of Tyre, that's spelt like a Welsh person saying the word. Um Yeah, well, 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 well welcome welcome to uh actually 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 that, that you can blame Toronto for that. The guy who came up with that <laughs> translation was a Canadian dude. Mm. Uh, and anyways, um, they, they have some new localizations for uh, German and Italian and Korean and simplified Chinese. Giant ass bug list. You can check that. The link is in the show notes. If you've been having issues with Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition, you should absolutely go uh, check this out. This should be coming out on the Steams uh, very, very shortly. Um, also on uh, the App Store, uh, iOS Store, if you're playing games on that. Yeah, um, I, I like Baldur's Gate too. It's a fun, it's a reasonably fun RPG, and I'm glad that these guys are continuing to maintain it. I, I respect uh, the game for the sole purpose of that. Just visually, I can look at that and just keep walking. Oh, I'm like, oh, yep. <laughs> I, oh, 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 I, 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 sh- I, sh- I should mention just because this tickles me a little bit. If you do the Control F Linux on here, apparently um, the game crashes on Linux or it was crashing on Linux if you selected a gender on the character creation screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that one there, and uh, we'll uh, we'll send send some hate mail. Uh, <laughs> Up next, uh, War Torn Orphans. Give me a, you know, oh, never yeah. mind. Orphanage. No, I didn't misspell that. That's what the game is actually called. Uh, it's, uh, it's, as they describe it, and I'm quoting here, it's sitting in between The Sims and this war of mine. Uh, Orphanage is a resource management survival game of, uh, well, they say it explores the story of what happens to the children when, say, their parents go to war. They die and in the real world. Uh, They're all uh, dead. I'm, I'm sorry, Pedro. It's pronounced, would somebody please think of the children? Yes. Uh, and, well, the description of sitting somewhere in between the Sims and this world. Careful, of mine, Jordan. I don't want you to summon just, the mic- ghost of Michael Jackson. Dude. It made me go to sleep. It's like, okay, you're you're trying to build a game with this really meaningful message of think of the children and you Shame are making now. it a stupid uh survival simulator Ignan. type thing. <laughs> really? That's just Ignan. really Ignan. Yeah. Sorry, Pedro. <laughs> we, we... <laughs> we we we're having our own conversation here that's way more entertaining mm-hmm. than what you're saying. Um, hey man, why are we talking about this? Hey, it's a Kickstarter. They have been funded, and there's demo available. A, but yeah. if you go ahead and uh, also they're from Bordeaux, France, mm-hmm. uh, so you know oh, it's yeah. a weird. It's a thing. They nailed it. That's good. There's a demo. There is a yeah. demo, there but it's not demo, available. Yes. I'm going to finish this fucking sentence, motherfuckers. Just watch me. Um, <laughs> oh, so it's the guy who doesn't have anything written in the show notes. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> This is cute. Now you got one too. I'm going to make your life living hell all next week. Um, go go ahead and finish it since I was the one who found half the fucking stories and posted them. Are, are, are you talking to me? I was waiting for you to finish. Something no, 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 sweetheart. Bring it. Bring it. Right, I, I, I was just going to say that Makeup and Vanity Set is doing the music for this game, which I'm actually kind of interested in because I, like, uh, I like a bit of their stuff. They do uh, chiptune electronica. And I'm just concerned that it's going to fall in the same trap as this war of mine, where you're committed to like making this really miserable experience that really does convey the message that you're trying to get across. Mm-hmm. But it's not too engaging of a game, and you're gonna you're you're gonna you're gonna lose, lose people, except for the people who are like super into depression porn. I don't know. To me, the visuals on this kind of come across as like I was, I was like, is this war is strange. <laughs> War is strange, or war is Shadwin. Well, we could. All, uh, it's like war is strange if they like put a game in it. <laughs> it, war, it, war. it if I, life listen, is strange I, I, had gaming elements, it would be kind of like this. I want to see the Life is Strange spinoff called Life is Strange Love, where you're just playing as Doctor Strange Love. 
<laughs> That's it, man. That is See, very I would, agree. I would much prefer if they did a game, yes, very much tackling the subject, but you'd actually get control of the children that you're trying to keep alive and not just make it a spreadsheet simulator about survival. It's ugh. Yeah, don't don't make don't put children on spreadsheets. Just just say no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm going to hit the eject button before we get any worse than children on spreadsheets. Coming up next, we shoot some dinosaurs in the face. Come with us, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a trip back in time to the time of the dinosaurs 6,000 years ago after God created Earth. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna throw some chairs at Turok. Not the not the 2015 one, no, the 1997 <laughs> one that was recently re-released, uh, helped ported by uh, Night Dive Studios and Mr. Sticky Icky Butts, uh, Mr. Ryan C. Gordon, developed on the Kex engine. They're doing it all for the Kex, and you can pick it up for around fifth, not 20, 20 of your local particular stinky currencies. Um, we 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 bought this ourselves because this was on sale for five bucks, and yeah, go go play. We're gonna play some Turok. Um, so this is this is chair acquisition. This is the new and improved chair acquisition. Look at all those beautiful little icons. Where we take a game and we, 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 we this is a multi-part thing. We we break it down. We have we we cover does it launch the performance, the graphics, and the control. We give it a score from one to four chairs based on that. And we have the fun section where we give it a more ambiguous, loosely defined chair rating based on how we thought it felt. How we what how what we, we thought, thought of the game yes. what how we thought game <laughs> yes. what blame blah blah blah. So let's uh, let's kick this off. Uh, starting with uh, the the default assumed Linux Ubuntu as as a run. Ubuntu latest and greatest eighteen oh four LTS and Ryzen seven nine eighty powered box of business right here, putting all the pixels in your face. How does it launch? Uh, no problems on that. It runs out of the box coming from Mickey, but uh, I kind of expected it. Uh, performance on that 980. I tested it at 1080p and 2160. It's locked at 60. So, yeah, no problems there. It's not going to slow down. It fucking better not. Uh, this is based on the N64 port, if you're wondering more about that later. Graphics, I kind of knew something was off. If you're looking at the video right now, you're like, something's off. If you played it like I did way back when, when 3DFX version, you're like, where there's a fucking fog, Brad? Um, yeah, apparently you can cut that back on. It's not on by default. Uh, controls, it's wazed, man. Uh, it works out of the box with a Steam controller. Bonus soda on that. So I can run this thing straight down, clean bill of health, four green checky mark chairs, all up in its face. Yeah, uh, Fedora 2864-bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080Ti. Yeah, it has a bit of uh, problems with the Steam beta on the with the Steam overlay. If you have it enabled, you get some random shader exception. Um, no one posted anything about that on the interblag zone. I, I was about to give up, and then I thought, wait a second, let's, let's just turn off the overlay, see how that works. And uh, lo and behold, the game is 100% playable once you do that. So it doesn't get that one chair. Um, Performance-wise, I mean... Here's the thing. The N64 dev kits were like SGI Octane workstations and significantly more powerful than the N64 itself and some of the performance issues in this game. I, I don't think that's the case anymore. We, we're, 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 we're way past that point in hardware land. I think we're good. Um, graphics. I actually like the lack of fog. Uh, I thought I th actually thought it was kind of annoying in the original Turok, and I'm glad. Because you one. babies, you never experienced <laughs> the real version. I played it on the Nintendo 64. Like I said. You babies. Uh, you're, you, you fetch me a nipple, motherfucker. Change my diaper. Bite my ass. Um, yeah. Uh, otherwise, it's like the same chunky 1997 goodness. Uh, control wise, it doesn't actually require an N64 controller to play, so I immediately hate it. No, it's fine. Uh, it's Waz, this first person shooter. It's what you expect. No real surprises there. So, with the exception of a weird Steam overlay bug, which stops you from playing the game with the Ariola controller if you are so inclined. Yeah, I'd give it three chairs for the functions. What about on Solus for those who are yes. uh, more gingerly inclined? Yeah, so on Solus, uh, with the Steam beta, it launches just fine with the overlay enabled. Uh, I also noticed that it's uh, locked at 60 FPS, regardless of whether or not you have VSync on. So... That was a thing. I, mean, I wasn't really looking forward to seeing like 3,000 FPS 
uh, while playing the game, but you know, it would have been interesting to see nonetheless. Uh, the graphics, uh, they do give you an option to disable the extend draw distance, which brings back uh, the fog. How the game's and, supposed and, to look. Yeah, it, um, another option that they give you is to disable camera bobbing. And you can disable camera bobbing whether you're just walking forwards, whether you're uh, strafing. You can control all of that, and it's yeah, no, it it's so much better. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> now controls. This is a game from 1997, and they allow you to rebind all the keys, and you get some uh, mouse sensitivity sliders. So over here, as far as I'm concerned, on uh, Solus 3.999999. Uh, uh, well, along with the uh, Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080, it gets uh, four chairs. <laughs> All right, well, that there you go. Uh, three chairs on Fedora, four chairs on Solus, and Ubuntu. Let's move on to the fun section. Hmm. Then, do you All have right, fun? Uh, check this out. One thing you might have noticed if you're watching the video version is uh, a thing that was done in the 90s because 3D was new hotness, and they're like, fuck it, everything's a platformer. Why is this an issue with Turok, you might ask yourself? Turok ain't got no damn feet. That's one of the big fucking <laughs> issues right there. There's a small problem with that. Um, Preach it, Boxy. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Most of the graphics you're looking at them for N64, they do scale up quite nicely. The sounds, fuck no, they don't, man. Anything that's sampled, like a voice sample, is like scratchy bad. Um, but you're not playing this for the audio majesty, man. Uh... Something, you know, added for the N64 version was clearly aim assist. I didn't remember this shit. And it's fucking wonderfully bad. I love it. You, you don't... I don't remember the Humvee. Um, you, you just kind of fart in the enemy's general direction and it'll hit them. It kind of sucks some of the fun out of the game because no precision is required. Uh, that's definitely a thing, man. It's primitive as shit, man. 100%. But... As Pedro pointed out in a stream, great fucking level design, enemy fucking placement. There's gotchas in there. Like still today, you're like, whoa, shit, motherfucker. All right, I got it. If you get up to one place, then you're getting capped. And it's just laid out and it keep well paced. Think like way before Half-Life 2 pacing, Half-Life 2 pacing. It mm -hmm. keeps you going through that. Um, here's the thing, though. Uh, unless you have like a raging nostalgia boner, I'm going to have to say... Uh, Keep your distance from this business unless it's on sale. Now, if you're like me and you played the original with your 3D effects pass-through card, maybe you had a Voodoo 2 back then, whatever, you probably didn't pay fucking 20 bucks for it then. <laughs> this isn't the PC version. This is the N64 version. And uh, it's currently $5. That's kind of what I think it should be from a game for 19, uh, 97, not yeah, 20 you can, you can get you can get the double pack for like ten, I think. Exactly. I think I paid like ten or twelve dollars for this in part two, which is coming to Linux. Isn't that right, Ryan? Supposedly. Um, sure is. Give me some mayonnaise. That's right, baby. Let's make those grilled cheese sandwiches. And uh, Pedro seems to think because the original ROM on the N64 was eight megs. This thing clocks it at like two hundred and forty something megs. And you said it's all the music folder. Oh, yeah, it is, because if you go into the game folder and you right-click on it, it's mm -hmm. 221 megabytes. All right. <laughs> I had fun with it. I mean, this is, like, the first time in a long time, the fun I had with it was dicking around and, like, synapses and neurons and shit going, like, I remember this. Remember before we got old? Yeah, and had responsibilities and shit. Oh, yeah, good times. That happened. And uh, the N64 cheat codes work. I looked those up and I was like, it has disco fuck around mode. So good on that. Uh, I, I would just say solid three on this. Uh, unless you're paying the fucking iron price for it. Then I don't know about that. Jordan? Yeah, I mean, it's it's Turok. I played it back in like 1999 on a rented N64 cartridge from Blockbuster. <laughs> and it's still pretty solid after all these years. I mean... This Turok never really did anything particularly revolutionary. It's just a fairly well designed game, like was said before. Uh, the, level, the level design is solid. The enemy placement is good. There's uh, lots of areas to explore. Lots of secrets. Remember secrets and secrets and mm -hmm. shooters, man. Where you nope. get, like, oh, where the where the fuck am I? Oh, hey, secret unlocked. Um, 
yeah, the, there's there's a lot of like ammo management stuff in here as well. Just because you ha- you suck at shooting, then you will run out of bullets really quick. Um, and yeah, it, it's a, it's an older game, so you get things like the enemies are super vulnerable to circle, circle strafing. Dumb but, as bricks. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, but again, I can't really fault it for being a game from 1997. That's not it's not the fault of the game at all. Um, it's, I mean, it's not, here's the thing. It's nice that we can play N64 games on modern hardware. Um, if you're, and yeah, if you're, if you're a PlayStation kid back in the day, then a hundred percent. Yeah. Go check this out. If it's on sale and reasonably priced because you missed out on a relatively fun shooter where you can go murder dinosaurs and time travelers and robots and the occasional Humvee. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, you get to go to the sub world. The, the, the one, one thing I really do like about Turok is that they actually do give you like a reason to backtrack because there is stuff that like you'll see it and you're like I can't get to this right now I got to figure out how to fucking do this and there's and a lot of shit that is in there then you're like I should get it. and some of it's just red herrings too man yeah they're oh, not yeah. above that yeah. oh yeah no the, 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 this this is like classic ninety shooter right the this um this is um it's 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 it harkens back to that so if you were if you were a fan of it back in the day then a hundred percent you will enjoy it. Um, though I'm like I said, or like Vince said, I'm not really sure about the value add here. If you played it already, uh, you you might you might get some jollies, but you're not gonna get twenty dollars worth of jollies. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a solid three. It's it's a fun shooter. I, I enjoyed it. it I is. enjoyed playing it. And it's for all the reasons that have already been described. Old school first person shooters always have that timeless uh, feeling of fun about them. Uh, none of the RPG elements, uh, forced story bits, pointlessly taking control away from you to show a cutscene, or even the sense that there is only one way to progress and no point in backtracking. Okay, if we're being honest, uh, Two Rock does do a little bit of the uh, yeah, we're going to just take away control away. Uh, we're just going to take control away from you. There we go, English properly, uh, <laughs> to show you that Two Rock is picking up a key and it really looks like he's drinking something from the key. But Prompt whatever, juice. It, it's uh, yeah. I guess this was the game that introduced that particular um, of um, I don't know faux par whatever you want to call it it's i don't know it's uh i like it i like it a lot it, but that said it's it's just so much fun it's it is good to see a game from 1997 that still holds up to this day sure the graphics look like crap the music is not all that great but it is a fun game and it keeps you playing and it's like oh it's actually you know once you get into the groove you're actually it's it's very hard to put down so as far as i'm concerned it gets three chairs hey man uh, we get us all three all the way down i don't know oh, yeah. I, I think maybe after i sit on it for a little while because it is very very difficult this is like a genuine shit i'm old moment of going mm-hmm. fuck there's some people like this is a retro game, and I distinctly remember like thinking it'll never look better than this. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think like, I think basically, basically the the rule is now if you can remember seeing it in a blockbuster aisle, it's a retro game. <laughs> See, legit. When Quake Two came out, it's like oh, the graphics look so good, right? And and, and, and then and then we go and bitch about Tomb Raider. Yeah, yeah. next game cast. <laughs> also, uh, I think I want to throw in point because I remember you know. Page was like, how come indie games can't do this type of level to look at what the budget was for this? That's probably why. Yeah. yeah. A little bit different. KK. And indeed. All right. Coming up next, we discuss the finer points of cured meat and talk more about Turok, apparently, because we haven't talked about it enough. And as the sun rises in the east. That's the East, right? Well, whatever. Well, it's uh, it's time for the hate mail. Yeah, if you've been with us from the beginning to the end, that I was the laziest you. damn bailout I've ever seen for a second. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah come, no, come, it's, come on, give, give, give us some like Rohirrim shit, man. <laughs> Start us off with like, as the sun rises in the East, so too. Listen, despite man, he did, but he got about right here, and he said, "Fuck it." Uh, 
<laughs> no, as the sun rises in the west, wh- no, wait, the northwest, something like that. Anyway. You can leave us some hate mail. Go on over to latestgamecast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form, make sure you pick LGC Weekly uh, if you'd like to leave some proper hate mail. Or, you know, there's another category that you can just literally say anything that comes to your mind. No promises we will feature that, but, uh, you know, considering how starved we are for some hate mail every now and then, we probably will. So, this week, we have System D up first, and he says, And I thought Osteoferocious was the best title I'd ever heard. Well, uh, yeah. Turns out that uh, the Salabi Concussion was uh, pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah, system two. That, hey, man, that's you can leave a comment on our Patreon post and do a Patreon. It's going to get read. I'm just saying, fair warning. And you know, I kind of agree. I was, well, I don't know, Jordan. What do you think? Uh, I, listen, if if you, if your salami is ringing, consult <laughs> consult the doctor and don't don't close your eyes. <laughs> if your salami is light sensitive, I, I also yeah. think that uh, osteoferosis did. <laughs> collectively cause us to lose our shit too so. Osteo- osteoporosis was good yeah <laughs> that was pretty good yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I i i will say though like keeps coming back to like empty show it's like fucking hitler is not having a stroke just <laughs> made me lose my shit i, I not look at that picture <laughs> that's chuckling like an idiot okay so a couple of weeks ago we talked about maybe it was last week no it was a week before last uh we talked about open need for speed three we're like hey man i think it was jordan jordan or maybe pedro I am hedging my bets here. It's 50 fucking 50 because I know I didn't say it. It's like, maybe we'll get some SDL2 love up in this business, to which the developer of Open Need for Speed 3 wrote back, yo, I'll add SDL. Don't you guys worry. Winky face. Appreciate the sh- shout out of the project. Much appreciated. That's neat. Oh, uh, yeah, that's good. It's good. Um, yeah, no, uh, I, I think I think it's really valuable to support a lot of these like engine re-implementation things because Game preservation is super important, mm-hmm. especially yep. now that um, the platform that a lot of these games were published on no longer actively supports these games. And in fact, will occasionally go out of their way to remove support for these games. So it's crucial that these projects exist. Well, I so, mean, go- it is not uncommon for them to nerf an old, older version and resell it as a remastered. This is, mm-hmm. this is also true. And so, sometimes uh, the remastered doesn't get a Linux port too. Hashtag Duke Yeah. Mm hmm. Gearbox, mm. and, and and again, as like portable hardware improves, like you can totally probably play it on like a fucking tablet eventually with like a beefy enough GPU attached to it. This is um, true. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> keep, keeping everything nice and open source and portable enables that sort of migratory pattern. I want to say. Anywho, and finally, this is from Bradley Pariah. He says, "Hello, I remember this game being a lot foggier than this as an adult." Turok. Yeah, he's talking about Turok. I thought the Xbox just didn't have the draw distance to render the game, but back when I originally played it, it really set the stage for the game. Maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but I feel like the game used to feel a lot more claustrophobic because you couldn't see where you were going. It made the levels feel larger. Well, we talked a little bit about this. We did. Yes, um, yes we did. Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, Bradley, you are kind of wrong because uh, the second comment that Bradley left on my uh, stream for Turok was that, yes, it wasn't the Xbox, it was the N64. That's after I brought up that it was the N64. <laughs> after I brought up that. <laughs> Stop. Die, die, die. Listen, man, I, I don't listen to those cocaine belly people. Uh, Here's you will you will obey the cocaine belly, <laughs> lest your very soul be rent asunder. <laughs> Does not juggle it angers. Um, here's the Wakes. thing, man. I I'm very curious as to why the fog was not switched on. Because default, it was off. Yes, I did not realize until today. I mean, to say that is a. <laughs> also, the menu option should be fog. It's very counterintuitive. Like, oh, if you think I need to cut that off in yeah. order to get it back? Extended yeah, it, draw it, distance, yes. It, it, it requires you to understand the historical context of that <laughs> menu option, which right. is a mm-hmm. bit of a hard ask. Uh, it's like a hardware limitation of 1997. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying that the SGI Octane 
ran circles around my i7 with well, uh, hey man, I mean, it had an SDI chip in the N64. That was it. Did, yeah. yeah, true story. Yeah. Anyway, on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You could always find us around 9:30 Eastern time. It is a thing. Put us all up in your face and in your pussies. It's got a brilliant. I'm Vin Stone. You can find me at Vin Stone on the Twitters. Plus Vin Stone. Type in Vin Stone into uh, Bing, and it will probably tell you you're a horrible person. I'm, I'm Jordan Spung. Jitsi, my, my, now with the cocaine yeah. inside that line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, my, my name is Jordan Spung. My graphics are in Silicon, but my tits are. You can find me at The Burning Pool on Twitter, plus Jordan Spung on Google+. Plus. And I'm actually surprised I don't have anything incriminating anywhere oh, around do, here baby. this week. It, listen <laughs> so now. I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter. Or plus Pedro Mateos on Google Plus. Do, do I even need to fucking ask? Or? No, no, we learned absolutely fucking nothing. Okay. I learned. I, I don't know. Yeah, see. <laughs> there you go. But, well, listen, listen. I, I learned that if my soul. If my salami is light sensitive, I should get it in MRI. <laughs> if your salami <laughs> remains light sensitive for more than four hours. Uh. <laughs> If your salami squints at more than four nits, but think you're about fucked. it. Think about it. Like, what if you got uh, bit by a vampire, but it only affected your dick? So, so how, how how did that work? So my dick can't see sunlight, or like go into a place uninvited, or yeah, cross it's it's open water. cross running water. Yeah, that's and a it, problem. It's, it, 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 it's obsessed with uh, it's obsessed with counting things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can you imagine if your dick couldn't cross running water? What exactly would you do if you had to, I don't know, take a piss? You better film it's what you better do. <laughs> well, well, so so we 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 got we got we gotta define it then. Can your is it is it like the, the outer fleshy bit or does your urethra still count as part of that? All of it's it. Not, it's, it's not cro- it's not crossing running running water. Running water is going through it. I just wanna know where the fangs are. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all fangs, Ben. It's all fangs. Yeah, it's just all things. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just a fucking incisor tooth jutting out of your crotch. All things to all people. <laughs> all all good things must come to an end. Just we like love you. Show. Die five. Bye. Five dudes. <laughs>